Ciao! I'm Lawrence Lowe. Let me bring you to Umbria, the green heart of Italy for a wine and gastronomy tour. But as all roads lead to Rome, I briefly stayed overnight in the Italian capital, where I marveled at all the monuments and historical sites that represent the origin of Western civilization nearly 3,000 years ago. Umbria is only two hours away northeast of Rome, and it's the only region in Italy that does not border the sea. But in this landlocked area, in central Italy, I discovered a true gourmet paradise. I'm here. Cafe Sandri and the new barista. So I need to make two espresso. <laughs> I'm in the wine museum in Umbria, very close to Perugia, and arguably the most important wine museum in Europe. All the expositions here demonstrate how grape, winemaking, and viticulture are seamlessly blended into the way of life for Europeans. And I think more importantly, it shows the history of Western civilization through wine and winemaking. The relationship between viticulture and life is so closely associated here in Europe. The three main ingredients for food and hospitality was wine, olive oil and bread. Now, in Northern Europe, where the Celtics used to live, it would be the milk and the cheese. So Northern Europeans, back in the old days, descended down here in this part of Southern Europe and introduced milk and cheese to the population. So apart from wine, olive oil, bread, there would be also milk and cheese. And those were the sustenance of life in Europe. Can you explain to me, Gianluca, what are these four things? The flute player, the dove, the dancer, and the goat represents. Let's start off with the flute player. Oh yeah, it's the spirit of life, the yeah. beauty of life. Yeah. It's the music. Bacchanalia. It's the Bacchanalia, okay. yeah. And then the dancer? The dancer is the rhythm of, of life. Okay. It's the spirit that wine gives to you. Yeah, yeah. so when we drink wine, we're all happy by yeah. like dancing. Yeah. Right? yeah. Now, what about the dove? The dove, you can recognize that it's Picasso, thanks to that yes. dove. It's the sign of the master. Like one of his other masterpieces, the Guernica, right? Yeah, yeah. It's a dove. yeah. Now, lastly, what about the goat? Why? What has it got to do with wine? Is the sacred victim, yeah, the yeah. enemy of the trunk of the vine tree. Oh yes, it must to to pour out yeah. its blood. Blood and the blood, the color also represents wine, right? Yeah, because blood is life. Yes, and wine is life. So that's the relationship. Yeah, Picasso was a genius. Yeah, through this print, he basically put everything together yeah. about life and wine. Yeah. He was a Spaniard. Yes, not Italian. <laughs> not Italian, but it was a man from the Mediterranean Sea. Okay, so Mediterranean, yeah. European. Yeah, yeah, sure. Great, thank you. You're welcome. So remember last time when we did the documentary in Portugal, we showed you what port wine is. That's a kind of sweet, fortified red wine. Uh, what I have here in this part of Italy is another type of sweet red wine, but instead of putting the Aguadente um, Vinica, which is the alcohol, into the wine, this has no additional alcohol. Now, how this is made, look at this grape. Look at this grape here. This is all shriveled up. So basically what this is, that they will harvest this in, in October, then they will put it on a straw mat. 
put it in a hut to let it air dry until about January. And the result is this. You have this shriveled up grape, which is full of sugar because all the water would have evaporated. And this is a very unique kind of wine that is produced. They won't produce this every year because they only get the best grape for this uh, particular wine called Pasito, which literal translation is past. So it's overripe. Um, and this is from 2005, so this is seven years already. And um, what it is, is it's a really nice glass of sweet red wine. Salute! Forty-five people picking olives. This is the Olive Oil Museum, which is right next door to the Wine Museum in Umbria, which is near Perugia. Now in China, you probably think olive oil is uniquely uh, used for cooking. Let me give you a brief history about olive oil. In ancient Greece, this alabaster was filled with aromatic olive oil for use as a prize to give in a competition. Olive oil was also used as a lubricant, whether it was for wool, cotton, stone, or two pieces of wood that rubbed together. And most importantly, in the Roman time, olive oil was actually used as a source of light. So just to recap, olive oil can be used as a religious usage, for lubricant, for lighting, for medicine, even for cosmetics, and in fact, for food, it was secondary. I'm standing in a very traditional olive press and using this hemp fuel filter as how they used to squeeze out the olive oil. Now, in China, we have a lot of olive oil in the supermarket. How to distinguish the good olive oil from the bad olive oil? What are the quality differences? First one, olive oil. What does it mean? It means that this comes from refined olive oil, a mixture of refined olive oil and extra virgin olive oil. And the second one is extra virgin. Extra virgin olive oil, 90% of the olive oil found in China supermarket is extra virgin. However, Italian law says that this olive can actually come from anywhere in the European Union, so it's not really place specific. The third one and the most, the highest quality is this kind of olive oil, DOP, Denomination of Protected Origin from Umbria. So this can only come from Umbria and also it has the organic certification. This is an organic olive oil bottled in untransparent glass to protect the olive oil from the sunlight. At home, how do we determine the quality of the olive oil? Sight and taste, two important factors. Smelling it, the first one, no aromas, very, very little. Second one, a little bit of brassiness now. You want to smell the fresh cut grass, the nuttiness, almonds, and some sort of spiciness. This one, you can smell the spiciness, the nuttiness, and the grassiness. Now, we always, always want to taste the olive oil. Now, a lot of Chinese, we think, oh my god, I'm drinking raw oil. It's disgusting. Am I going to have diarrhea, la duzi? No way, because remember, olive oil is a medicine. So, in fact, a lot of young children, babies, and old people, in the morning, they drink a spoon of olive oil in Europe, and it protects their stomach. Good uncut grass, spice, nutty. Delayed reaction, spice, spicy, just like Sichuan peppercorn, but in the back of the throat. That means that your olive oil is healthy, full of polyphenol and full of antioxidants.
picante. Ah, bueno. But the, the land after that is not yours. Yes, it's mine. Oh, it's yours. It's my forest. 1956. Okay. okay. Moraiolo. Moraiolo. This is from the leaves. You can see also from the leaves. It's uh, small yes. and long. The frontoyo oh. is large, large and, the, okay. and the plant is big. It's okay. typical from Tuscany. Yes, from Tuscany. It makes, yes. a, it makes a different. Two characteristics about this particular olive estate. One is it is 100% organic. Look at all the weeds all over the place, which means that it doesn't use any pesticides. Second, look at these calciferous rocks, stones and rocks. This makes harvesting very difficult. This is on a slanting slope. And can you imagine the people trying to harvest the olives every year, full of stones, full of rocks. It's actually quite dangerous to harvest here. But that's what makes this estate unique because it's by the love of nature that the owner, Alessandro, creates this olive oil estate. I'm in the World Heritage City of Assisi in Umbria. This is a tourist city and obviously with today the medieval festival there's more tourists on a Sunday. But come here, let me show you something really, really special. I love this place. Look at this, I'm in a gourmet food shop and as soon as I come in, a beautiful lake of prosciutto. This is Italy and look at this. Puff, a wall full of pasta. And as we're in Umbria, we have this specialty pasta called strangozzi. And obviously in Italy, we have pasta spaghetti, but this is spaghetti, long, really long spaghetti. And come here, more good stuff. Another specialty is kind of legume. This is lentils. And apart from the lentils, you have all kinds of legumes. You have this barley, you have the broad beans, you have the kidney beans dried onions garlic smells so good here and then come this is heaven for me look at the sausages in the counter all different kinds of cheese with cheese with um, black truffles pecorino look at this this is the head of a wild boar cingale which is a specialty here in Umbria because we're in the heartland, green heartland of Italy, full of wild animals. This is heaven for me. I really love this place and this is so rustic. <laughs> Umbra for us, for the Italy, yeah. is the green art of Italy. Yes. I like that you eat. Oh, it's, very... it's lovely. With this uh, green fava beans, uh, after my restaurant, mm -hmm. we will cook for you one spectacular recipe of uh, 1800. The name of this pasta uh -huh. is uh, Frascarello. Frascarello. Well done, Lorenzo. Beautiful sunset. It's lovely, huh? Yeah. Goes to the side. Have you seen that? The basil here with mint, you have chives, you have sage, yeah. this is uh, citronella, Bravissimo. and then this is again, this is basilico, which is um, lola, and then this is thyme, lemon thyme, timo yeah. di limone, timo limone, yeah. bravo, and then you have mint, mint and my parsley, yes, right, great, yeah. and yes. People, we are ready, we can start to cook. Ok, let's go. Diamo! Let's go. Allora, vieni qua, vieni qua, vieni qua. Allora, Lorenzo, sì. oggi, oggi, today, yeah. we will prepare the really old frascarello. Frascarello, right? Fantastico. Allora, il pecorino is just a bit smooth. 
What is this? Pecorino Romano or Sardo? No, it's a Pecorino from Umbria. Okay. It's a in fossa. It's a holding the whole underground floor. Oh, okay, yeah. The fava beans, you remember yeah. that we bought Fave, before? Yes, very good. Fresh asparagus. Asparagus. Yeah. Tartufonero. You know everything, that's not to speak. Yeah. I'm in this northern Umbrian mountain village called Montone, and I'm in this really beautiful Locanda del Capitano, which literally means captain's guest house. And the proprietor owner, Mr. Giancarlo Polito, just showed me this really easy and delicious pasta dish which is called frascarello. So how is it made? Very easy. Use your hands. And what I'm gonna do now, put this in the colander and shake it, stir it. So you kind of shake, 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 shake until the little bits of flour bits become the frascarello. And what you have to do is just pour it into a very small colander and you put it in boiling water for about one minute or so, not more, not less. Put here the frascarello, a little bit of olive oil. So that. Wash my hands. Two handfuls of beans. And then a little bit of the sauce from the pasta. Of the pecorino cheese. Like this. And then away from the fire. Like this. And look at this. Smell the pecorino cheese. Look at that. Pascarello, this, and fresh mint, a little bit of salt, fresh asparagus as the decoration, and the most important thing is the white truffle, no, the dark truffle. You spray it on. You can smell the truffle. Really nice. Look at that. And then lastly, finish it off with a little bit of olive oil. And voila. I'm in the Umbrian town of Torgiano in the Longarotti winery owned Bella Vue Spa. Now this is the only spa that I've ever been to so far that is themed around wine. So what I'm doing here is a three-step treatment. The first treatment was just a scrub down, but the scrub down element was a combination of their own olive oil, sea salt and wine. After having been scrubbed down, I go into the Hermann shower just to have my pores open up for 10 minutes and I take a shower just to rinse down the scrubbing elements. Then I come back onto the massage bed to have a treatment of olive oil massage, very relaxing. And the final treatment is probably this, non pre ultra, which is a three liter um, bottle of red wine poured into this bathtub. And of course, they give you a glass of Rubesco red wine. And how else can you better enjoy life than a sip of wine and salute it?